recitation. Uh, the uh, Ramadan challenge, uh, alhamdulillah, started in uh, 2013 uh, in person uh, in Victoria and continued the next year in Victoria. And from there, uh, uh, we took it to uh, Duncan for four years uh, in person. Uh, the first time it was done online, it was in 2014. And the second time, it was when the pandemic hit. And it was a good time to bring it back online. Alhamdulillah, this year, as you can see the numbers on the screen, uh, a record uh, 1,300 participants. Uh, the average daily participation, 436, meaning that every single day you have 436 people participating throughout the month. Uh, you may not uh, realize what these numbers represent, but I will tell you in a minute what it represents. Uh, we raised, alhamdulillah, this year for this uh, contest over $14,000 uh, that will be given out as gift cards, uh, which have been uh, mostly distributed uh, to about 400 participants uh, of the 1,300. Uh, to understand how big is this contest and how uh, unique the contest is, we are giving out $300 to anyone who can find a better contest in North America. $300. If you find a better contest in North America, I will inshallah guarantee that I will give you the money, $300. But it has to be with these numbers. Right? Let alone the feedback, the overwhelming feedback that we got. We received 275 feedback, uh, 49 videos, video submissions. Uh, these numbers, uh, we were not able to find any other contest in North America. That's why we are giving out $300 for, for whoever can find something better. Uh, so now, inshallah, we'll uh, do uh, the draw, the two... Uh, for the participants, uh, and we'll ask, inshallah, uh, Sheikh Ihsan. Jazakallah khair, Sister Zainab. Yes, you could. Sheikh Ihsan to take uh, the first number. Yeah. Yeah, you could uh, just pick a number. Yeah. Yeah. Zero five zero zero six. Eight, nine, one. It's the red ticket, right, for the participants of the... MashaAllah. What's your name? What's your name? Habiba. Habiba? Come, come, inshallah, take... Uh, she can choose one of, the, one of the five. You will have the choice of one of five different... This is Apple, Apple. the Morton store. Okay. Choice. Okay. Tim Horton it is. Okay. Mashallah, congratulations. Mashallah. Second number. Second number. Zero five zero zero six eight six eight. <laughs> so, inshallah, we'll do two more draws after the lecture, inshallah, with no further ado, uh, Sheikh Ihsan Newman visiting us from, uh, from Surrey. Uh, he delivered the khutbah today in uh, Nanaimo Islamic Center. And inshallah, uh, the talk is going to be around 25 minutes-ish, uh, plus or minus five minutes. Inshallah. Faliyat Fadda, mashkuram, tabba. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala habibina rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's very nice to be back, alhamdulillah. I see a lot of familiar faces. 
Well, with uh, the passing of Ramadan, it's come and gone again, and it reminds us always of how fast time is passing by. And, you know, when we look at ourselves in the mirror every morning, we can see ourselves slowly aging and heading down that path uh, and getting older and older. And it's good and healthy to have a reminder every once in a while of how short life actually is. And this reminder is for myself actually first and then to all of you. So there's a few ayat I would just like to remind ourselves of because it helps us reflect and put things in perspective. Because throughout the hustle and bustle of the daily grind, the daily lives that we have, it's good to kind of hit that reset button and really focus on the things that matter most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. Allah azza wa jal says, every soul, no doubt, will taste death. And this is a very humbling ayah because we live our lives daily with this in the furthest part of the back of our minds that, you know, our clocks are ticking. And I always, you know, give this example when I, when I talk to people about this topic of, you know, we all have these like invisible numbers on our heads, you know. Uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all long lives in obedience to Him and give us a good ending. Allahumma ameen. But all of us have this invisible number. It could be like 15,224. That represents the days left you have in the, on this earth. We have to really think of it like that. All of us are going to depart this world at different times. When is that time going to come? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But what do we have to do? We have to prepare for that day. And reflecting on this topic really helps put that into perspective and help us reflect on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Kullu man alayha fan. Allah azza wa jal says, every single thing on the face of this earth will perish. We're walking around here with our degrees, our jobs, our cars, our homes, you know, different responsibilities, but all of that is going to be washed away. None of it is going to matter in the end, except for what is in here. What are vessels in our chest called a heart contain? How close we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did we do for this deen? Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us throughout the Quran about this over and over again how limited our time is. Allah azza wa jalla also says, Hal ata ala insani hinum min dahri lam yakun shay'an madhkura. This is one of the most humbling ayahs to me personally. Has there not come a time where mankind wasn't even a thing being worth mentioned? Subhanallah. Really ponder that ayah. We were nothing. We didn't even exist. We didn't, we didn't even have a name. We didn't have an existence on this earth. Was there not a time where mankind wasn't even a thing being worth mentioned? Subhanallah. Before Allah Azza wa Jal created the jinn, created the malaika, and we came after. Subhanallah. We just came into this world. We didn't exist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and gave us this life. And not just that, promised us an eternal life if we obey Him. If we have taqwa. And all of us are dealing with different things. We, our loved ones are passing away. You know, some of us may be dealing with, you know, health, health struggles. And this puts things in perspective. This helps us reflect on how precious life is. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Fusilat mentions some ayat. What I want to touch on here is this is, you know, 
we don't want to make the whole topic about you know death, 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 and make it all morbid, but. It, it does help put things in perspective, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also offers us hope. Offers us a light at the end of the tunnel. In Surah Fussilat, as the Shaykh recited, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna ladheena qalu rabbun Allah. Verily those who believe, that say, our Lord is Allah, our Master is Allah. Those who live by that. They don't just say, La ilaha illallah with their tongues and that's it. No. What reflects in their heart is, ref or what's in their heart is reflected in their actions. Inna ladina qalu rabbun Allah thumma staqamu. Those people that say, Our Lord and Master is Allah, they enslave themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we think of slavery, we think of something negative. We think of, you know, a slave master whipping the slaves, the slave have no rights. But when we enslave ourselves to Allah, because that's what we're doing essentially when we say Allah is our Rabb, Allah is our Lord and Allah is our master, we're enslaving ourselves entirely to Allah because we belong to Him. And enslaving ourselves to Allah actually sets us free. Where if we turn away from Allah, we are enslaving ourselves to our desires. We're enslaving ourselves to the society around us, the fashions, the trends, the ideas, you know, peer pressure. But once we truly enslave ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we break those shackles of, of society around us and we're able to truly focus on what is important. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Thumma staqamu. So those who have Iman, those who say our Lord and Master is Allah and truly enslave themselves to Him, Thumma staqamu. And they remain steadfast. They remain upright. They don't deter left or right or fall back. They remain on the straight path. They don't practice Islam one day and then not the next. They don't pray one day and then not the next. No, they remain firm. We ask Allah to keep us firm. And a good ending. Allah Azza wa Jal says, What is the reward for this? What is this is this is this is the you know one of the beautiful things about our deen because Allah Azza wa Jal gives us a glimpse into the future. If we obey Allah and we truly enslave ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't let that or be distracted in this world in any way and we have that istiqama, what does Allah Azza wa Jal say? تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Allah Azza wa Jal says, and this is referring to the person that's departing from this world. Now, this is a time that we are all going to face, no matter what. Every single one of us here are going to get to a time where we are leaving this world. Right? And that's going to be the scariest time for a human being because nobody here has experienced death. Right? Obviously. Nobody here has experienced death. So when that time comes, that's going to be a terrifying thing. Your, your soul is leaving your body. Your soul is departing from this world. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, if you have istiqama, if you have steadfast, steadfastness, and you're upright on your deen, Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has a special gift for you at the time of death. And may Allah Azza wa Jal give us all this gift. Ameen. Which is Tatanazalu Alihimul Malaika to Allah Tahafu Wala Tahzanu. Allah Azza wa Jal's gift to the person who remains firm on the deen in this world is that he will send down malaika. He will send down angels to that person at the time of their death. And 
not angels with bad news, angels with good news. These are the angels that descend upon the person that's dying to give them glad tidings of paradise. And these angels, they say, Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. Now, I want you guys to visualize this. Visualize yourself in this situation. You are on your deathbed, whether it's at home or in the hospital. You're scared, you know it's over. The exit's there, you're about to take it. And then all of a sudden, these beautiful angels descend upon you. And they say, Allah takhafu. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Shh, calm down. Wala tahzanu. Don't be afraid of what? Well, you've never experienced death before. And your soul is leaving your body for the first time. Right? You're, you're departing from your loved ones. You're departing from this world. Of course, it's going to be terrifying. But if you see these beautiful angels descend upon you in this most scariest time, and they're telling you, calm down, relax. Don't be afraid. It's okay. What's going to happen to you? You're going to go from extreme fear to being extremely calm. And don't be sad. Be sad over what? Well, you're leaving all of your loved ones behind. Your little son, your little daughter, your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your friends. You're, you're leaving all, all these people that you love so much behind. But you have these beautiful angels descend upon you telling you not to be afraid and not to be sad. So those emotions are going to be extracted from you instantly. You're not going to worry about anything anymore. You're not going to worry about your loved ones that you're leaving behind because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look after them. Now, in this situation, there's, there's, a, there's, there's different sides going on. Now, you, ha you have a person, imagine you have a person that you're visiting the hospital, a loved one that's departing. You knew, knew of them to be you know, an upright Muslim. And you know, you're telling the doctors, you know, can't you turn this up? Can't you give them this pill? Please do something, right? This is what we would say on this side. But the person that's experiencing death at this moment, that the malaika are descending upon, now that they know where they're going, they know where they're headed, do you think if they had the option of coming back to this dunya, to be with their loved ones, they would do it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The loved ones on one side are saying, Doctor, do something, please. Save him, save her. And the, the person that's experiencing it and seeing this dimension that we can't see of the malaika, and they know they're going to be eventually going to paradise, they don't want to come back here. They don't want to risk it, coming back here and, and doing something that they shouldn't. They're on their way. They're going to be thinking, hey, I'm going to go this way. You guys do what you can to get over there with me. I'm, I'm good. I'm not coming back. So we need to think about this. This, is, this gives us hope for ourselves when we're departing this world. And also, it helps us deal with the loved ones that are passing away or that have passed away. Because the beautiful thing about our deen is that it's not final. When we have a loved one pass away, yes, the, the, the relationship in this world is final. It's, it's over. The, that finality is there. But eternally, it's not. You're going to connect with them later on. But you just have to do your due diligence in this world to meet up with them after in paradise. And that's the reunion of the righteous, right? Because all the righteous are going to end up in paradise. So our loved ones that passed away before us that were righteous, it's upon us to be righteous, to meet up with them, right? So Allah says, تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ And the malaika come down, say, don't be afraid, don't be sad, 
and we give you glad tidings of the Jannah that you have been promised. The Jannah that the final messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about. The Jannah that you read about daily in the Quran. That Jannah, the Jannah you've been promised, now is yours. You're going to be heading there. This is what the Malaika say to the person that is passing away. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ Amazing ayat. I'll close with this. Then the Malaika say, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ Subhanallah. These Malaika, in addition to giving glad tidings of paradise, in addition to saying, don't be sad, don't, don't worry, don't be afraid, they say, by the way, every single thing you desired in this world, you will have. Every desire that you had in your mind will be fulfilled in paradise. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ Everything you, because we're living in this world and we think with a dunya framed mind. Everything that we see, cars, houses, luxuries, in this dunya, it's framed. Our minds are framed and wired that way. So whatever we can think of in this world, we will have in the akhirah. And Allah Azza wa Jal also tells us that whatever you desire once you get to paradise, because now you're going to be thinking about a whole set of different things. You're going to be thinking with your Jannah wired mind now. Hey, I want a river of honey. I want a tree of gold. Whatever, whatever it is that you desire in this life. And whatever it is you desire in the next life, Allah is telling you, you are going to have all of that. We just have to run through the course, the racetrack of this dunya and make sure we end on the right foot. Make sure we end in a good way. And everything you desire in this world, everything you desire in, in the akhirah, you will have. And the, 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 my most favorite part of this set of ayat is when Allah Azza wa Jal says this last part, Nuzulan min ghafur rahim. Amazing. So Allah Azza wa Jal, Nuzul, Nuzul in Arabic is, you know, what do you, what do you call when you go to um, a restaurant and, for example, you go for your halal steak, right guys? Halal steak. And before you get your halal steak, you get some calamari or something like that. You get some calamari or some potato wedges. What are those called? An appetizer, right? That's an appetizer. Allah Azza wa Jal Nuzul here means an appetizer. Can you believe that? Every single thing you desire in this world, every single thing you desire once you get to paradise, because we're still a creation and we're still only limited in our thinking what we want. Everything you desire in this world, everything you desire in the akhirah will be given to you. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, by the way, it's just an appetizer to get you started. I have much, much more in store for you. Subhanallah. How beautiful is that? Right? So it gives us so much hope, you know, to, to push ourselves, to attain that taqwa. Because the, you know, the, the, the reward is so great. The reward is so enormous for us to stay on the straight path. And it's for our own good. Right? It's, you know, as, as, as human beings, we want to see the reward right away. That's, that's, that's the catch, right? You know, you know, even the Ramadan 30 day challenge, right? You know, I did my 30 days, where's my gift card? You want, you want to see some physical reward fast, right? And I'm sure Brother Zohair has been hounded by, you know, <laughs> hundreds of kids to get the gift cards. But, um, this is a thing we want right away. But when it comes to, you know, our good deeds, doing things for the sake of Allah, we don't always see that right away. 
But Allah Azza wa Jalla is storing this for us in the Akhirah. Now, so these ayat that I've shared with you today should, you know, instill in us that uh, zeal that, and that hope that, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to be successful, inshallah. At the end of the day, our loved ones that we lost, we are going to be reunited with. Because, you know, the death of a loved one is, is such a, a, a difficult thing to go through. And I know right now, I don't know who you are, but people that, when I'm seeing these words right now, I know it's hitting home. And you're like, I just lost somebody or somebody's about to pass. But just remember that you will be reunited with them. And anybody that you love that passed away, they want you to live out your legacy. Make your legacy in this world. Live in a way that furthers your legacy and furthers their legacy. Be their extension on earth. The loved ones that you lost, be their extension on earth. Do khair in their name. Sadaqa jariya. Dig a well for them. Whatever it is, but be their extension on earth. And know and long for their company in the, the next life. Because the reunion of the righteous is a real thing. It really does happen. Allah has created Jannah for the people that are righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those. Allahumma ameen. And strive for that. And I'll end with that inshallah. Jazakum Allah khaira. Barakallah feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So we're going to do, uh, inshallah, a draw uh, for the uh, red ticket. Um, and the first one okay. is going to be... Zero five zero zero six eight eight three. And the second one. Zero five zero zero six eight eight six. Now we're going to move on, inshallah, to uh, some reflections from uh, a couple of participants, brothers and sisters. Uh, bear with me, inshallah. Before we, before we let the, uh, the couple of participants that we selected uh, say a few words about the Ramadan challenge, we would like to give uh, the first certificate to one of the youngest uh, participants uh, that has been selected uh, and one of the top finishers. Uh, in the whole uh, contest with the 295 points um, uh, in the young stream, 295 points, and she got added uh, money for participating in the video, uh, the video uh, submission contest as well. So the first one, uh, the youngest participant is Iman. Allah. Congratulations, Iman. 
amazing. MashaAllah. One, one of the youngest, alhamdulillah. And this is on the screen is how the certificate looks like. Um, alhamdulillah, specially designed for this uh, challenge. Uh, the, the second one is a participant who has been participating since uh, 2014, uh, since she was nine. And alhamdulillah, every year I would uh, visit her and I was telling her every year she was getting better and better and better. And she's uh, today uh, one of the winners of uh, the, the city of Victoria and also one of the top finishers with also 295 points. Uh, so, uh, Sister Noor. So we'll, we'll, we'll hear from Sister Noor. <laughs> we'll hear from Sister Noor before we announce uh, the, the, the third person, inshallah. You are ready to? You are ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can adjust the microphone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Noor Chaudhary, and I am an 18-year-old high school student living in Victoria. This year was my fifth time participating in the Ramadan competition, which continues to exceed my expectations each year. I would like to thank the creators, organizers, and volunteers of both tonight's event and the, the competition overall for their hard work and dedication. Your efforts do not go unnoticed. What started off as a small local contest has now grown tremendously into an event that I'm sure many of you look forward to each Ramadan. When you have a speaker as knowledgeable and well-spoken as Sheikh Ihsan, the participants can't help but return to the quiz each day, eager to learn something new about their religion. And by keeping each video short but concise with interesting topics, we are able to remain focused throughout the duration of the lecture and thus retain all the information required to answer correctly. Inshallah, we have all left the Ramadan competition with more knowledge than we had when entering it. We all live busy lives, it's true. And many of us grow even busier in Ramadan. As Sheikh Sohair said in the results video, over 100 participants never missed a single day. They all managed to find the time in their busy schedules to participate in the daily quiz. This is proof of how impactful and powerful this competition was and why our community needs to hold more events like this one. I would also like to congratulate all the participants of the Ramadan competition for their effort this year. Ultimately, it is not about the final prize, but the knowledge that you gained along the way. Inshallah, all of our du'as were accepted this Ramadan. Thank you for your time. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Noor. Alhamdulillah for uh, going back to Sister Iman, uh, this year was her first year having her own account, right? And Alhamdulillah she did very well. Uh, Sister Noor, uh, obviously she was doing better and better every year and Alhamdulillah she came on top. Even though it was a tie for, uh, for Victoria, Victoria was the only city that had a six-way tie in the open stream and a five-way tie in the young stream. And for the first time, Victoria lost the first spot for the first time in the history of the, the challenge. So we, we're getting more competition from other cities. But alhamdulillah, uh, they, uh, we had 130 participants from Victoria and they all did really, really well. Uh, now I would like to introduce uh, a brother uh, who has been participating for the third time, I believe, third, fourth time, uh, from Duncan. And uh, he, he's the winner of uh, the city of Duncan. Last year, he did uh, win the uh, video submission uh, contest. And you have seen him here in these programs reciting Quran. 
uh, and he will, inshallah, say a few words, uh, Brother Ayan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a hudah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Now I'll be perfectly, I'll be completely honest, my reflection is nowhere near as well prepared as Sister Noor's. But I would like to mention a few things that I think make the competition unique or a rather challenge unique compared to other challenges and competitions that I've seen. Now when we think of competitions, a hundred meter race might come up to our minds or even a Quran competition. And for these competitions we need to prepare a lot, right? Uh, a lot of time goes into training, a lot of time may go into preparing for it. Whereas for this competition, it doesn't matter if you were male or female, it didn't matter how, what, how old you were, everybody could participate. A 15 year old and a 60 year old could compete for first place and it did happen uh, uh, in many different ways. And at the same time, the competition doesn't take out too much time out of our lives. It's maybe five minutes for the video that Sheikh Ihsan beautifully delivers and three minutes maximum to answer the questions. So it's not even 10 minutes out of our days in the month of Ramadan, which again can be very busy, but Alhamdulillah the time uh, that we need to dedicate towards doing the competition isn't as long as many other competitions that we may know. So this allows us to stay motivated and do it even more and love it even more as well. Now talking about the videos, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Ihsan delivers them beautifully, doesn't stretch the topic, nor does he skip through it and just rush through the topic. We can understand the main concept of the video. The text in the video has different colors, so we can actually point out what the important point is, and we can understand the context behind that main point. And of course, the audio and the video quality were all amazing, alhamdulillah, and continue to get better each year. But the final thing that I want to say, and I think this is something that we can all apply in our lives, is that the Ramadan competition is more of a people's competition. The Ramadan competition rewards people for giving feedback, something that we don't see with a lot of competitions or contests. This means that people have their voices heard and they have the chance to say what they think about the contest so that the contest can get better each year and people want to do it more because their voices are actually heard. So we can take this in our own lives uh, by thinking if we take more advice and if we are more keen to listen to advice, even if it's delivered for too long, even if it's delivered maybe not in the right environments, we can get better as people if we try and get the good out of that advice. Similar to how the Ramadan competition keeps getting better each and every year because they love feedback and they use it to elevate levels each and every single year. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless everybody who's put in work for this contest behind the scenes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I cannot express uh, how proud uh, I am of the all the all participants, especially the ones who did incredibly well. It's not an easy task to just not miss a day in the challenge, in 30 days challenge, uh, let alone having most of the answers of all answers correct. It's, it's, it's a big challenge. I personally, I feel like if I entered the challenge, that I started, I would probably lose <laughs> compared to the efforts that uh, we have seen from, from, from uh, the people that we rewarded today and others that we have sent gift cards to. So Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm so proud of uh, everyone. 
uh, we have set up uh, a, a, what I call a, a, a photo opportunity for people who participate in the contest to take uh, photos with uh, Sheikh Ihsan and uh, those photos will be published inshallah uh, if you don't like your photo published we could just uh, take a photo with your own phone uh, as as far as the uh, future programs for this uh, for this year uh, we may have something in June that we are working on it's not uh, final yet but mainly during the summer we, we are doing uh, with the, uh, brother Yusuf in charge of the programming of uh, sports events. We have some sports events going on during the summer, including a tournament, like we did the tournament uh, during the winter. And one of the main programs that we did last year, and we, inshallah we are doing this year, is the, the summer conference. The summer conference that we have held uh, throughout the island in five different cities. So it's coming back, inshallah, at the end of August. And we'll be, inshallah, bringing uh, Sheikh Hassan and other speakers as well, and speakers from the local communities as well. Um, now, before we conclude, inshallah, uh, and we'll have dinner uh, shortly, uh, starting with the sisters. Uh, while the sisters are getting their food, we could start taking pictures for those who want to take some pictures. And we'll, inshallah, conclude uh, with, uh, with the final draw of the night which is the, the orange ticket first, and then the $50 draw that we do uh, in every event. We'll do the orange first. Yeah, we'll do the orange first. Just one, yeah. Just one more time. Yes. We'll do this one first, and then we'll do the other one. All right. Okay. Zero five zero zero six eight seven zero. You're going back with something. Mashallah. 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 And the, the final uh, draw is the $50 draw. Yes. Sorry. You can shuffle them. Just one. So it's a, the blue ticket. The blue ticket. Nine seven nine six eight two six four. in this uh, program. We hope to have more programs like these and hopefully, inshallah, uh, we are hoping the next challenge is going to be even bigger and better with more money. Uh, people are always not satisfied with the amount of money that we are given out, even though every year we double the amount, but still <laughs> the feedback is that we have to increase it and we are working hard to increase it. Yes, Adam? I hope that it's going to be much more, inshallah. We were only able to collect $14,000. We were aiming for 50. We were aiming for $50,000. So if we get $50,000 next year, we'll give out more money to everyone. Uh, we'll pray Maghrib, inshallah, after the food for whoever wants to stay back after the food, 9 o'clock, we'll pray Maghrib. We ask Allah wa ta'ala uh, to accept from all of us. And this is, uh, inshallah, the, the, the cake that we made especially for this event, which is similar to the, uh, to the poster, to the banner. 
this cake, every aspect of this cake has been carefully selected. So it's uh, three layers, strawberry filled, uh, buttercream on top, and uh, <laughs> with the colors that are matching the, the banner. So uh, I hope you will like it, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa tibu alayk. Jazakumullah khair.